So, you just received an Arduino board in your mail, or you're considering buying one, but what do you do with it now? Well, in this video series, I will attempt to introduce you to the range of Arduino microcontrollers and how to use them. By learning how to write code to the Arduino boards and grasping the basics of using input and output operations, you will be able to easily control things like displays, LEDs, motors, or even sensors to measure physical quantities. These can then be implemented in larger projects like robots or weather stations. Anyway, let's start. Without any prior knowledge in electronics, it can be very challenging and frustrating to build and design your own circuits. But thanks to the revolution in the hobby electronics done by the Arduino Foundation, anyone has access to microcontrollers. This is because they released a range of so-called Arduino boards. An Arduino is an open source electronics platform based on easy to use hardware and software. You can tell your board what to do by sending a set of instructions to the microcontroller on the board. Simply said, you program it with a USB cable telling it what to do. Here we can see a basic blink sketch being uploaded to the board. I will explain this later in the video how to do this. Also, open source means that the foundation itself releases its own boards at a premium price, but anyone is free to mass produce them if they want. Here I am showing all the clones found on eBay, which are quite cheap and most of them are produced in China. I will now introduce you to the boards. The examples that I have are of these four boards. The Arduino Uno, the Arduino Nano, the Arduino Pro Mini, and the 80 Tiny 85. Starting with the Arduino Uno, this is the most well known and vanilla board out of the whole Arduino family. When buying an Arduino board, I would recommend it to beginners which don't know which one to choose, as most tutorials use them. The one shown right here is the newest revision 3 and it is a genuine board produced by Arduino in Italy. I would recommend buying at least one from the foundation, as the higher price funds their project where they keep developing new hardware and software, which is good in the long run. The Uno is based on the ATmega 328P microcontroller IC, which has a 5V operating voltage, has 14 digital I.O. pins, of which 6 have pulse width modulation, and six separate analog input pins. It has 32 kilobytes of flash memory to store programs and 2 kilobytes of SRAM. If you don't understand some of the terms, I will explain them in more detail in the next video. You can also see an oscillator crystal on the board, which clocks the microcontroller at 16 MHz. The Uno is programmed with a USB Type-A cable to Type-B, also known as a printer cable. You can buy this board on the Arduino website, which is linked in the description below. The smaller brother of the Uno is the Arduino Nano, which has the same 80 mega 328 microcontroller, but it has a smaller form factor and its connectors are male, meaning that you need a breadboard to use it. The specs are almost basically the same, with an operational voltage of 5 volts and the same flash memory size and SRAM size. The number of digital I.O. pins is 14, 6 enabled with pulse width modulation. The number of analog input pins is 8, which is higher than the other boards, and the clock speed is 16 MHz. It is programmed using a USB-A to mini cable. The board for more experienced makers is the Arduino Pro Mini. Based again on the ATmega328 microcontroller, which has 32 kilobytes of flash storage and 2 kilobytes of SRAM, but it can be clocked at different speeds, depending on the operational voltage of the board, which can be either 5 volts or 3.3 volts. This is useful because some sensors only work with 3.3 volt logic, and 5 volts would kill them. There are 14 digital I/O pins available from which 6 support pulse with modulation 
and there are additional 8 analog input pins. The difference from a Nano is that the mail headers are not pre-soldered on the board, and are optional. There is no USB port present on it, only headers to attach a USB to serial breakout board, which serves as a programmer. The programming process can be seen here, and it is a bit more intimidating for beginners. The last, but probably the cutest microcontroller, is the 80 Tiny 85, which does not even have a supporting board, and is a pure microcontroller. With a mere 8 kilobytes of flash storage and RAM being 512 bytes, it is still a useful board. The clock speed can vary with an external oscillator chip, which is optional, and it can also work with varying voltages from around 3 to 9 volts. There are 5 digital pins available, from which 2 can do pulse wave modulation, and 3 take in analog inputs. The programming process is different from the rest, and I will explain them in another video. It is useful when you only need a couple of digital pins, and the space available is small. It is up to you which one you choose to work with in your project, but consider each of their advantages and disadvantages. Okay, now I know all those facts are kind of boring and useless if you don't fully utilize them, but now we get to the fun part of Arduinos, and that is building a circuit. Precisely, we will make a blinking LED using an Arduino. For this project we will need a half-size breadboard, jumper cables or pieces of wire, a red LED, a 220 ohm resistor, and an Arduino Uno with a USB printer cable. By looking at this diagram, we can see that we use the breadboard to connect all wires. If you don't know how a breadboard works, basically all holes in the middle are arranged in columns which are electrically connected. Basically, any lead of a wire or a header inserted in the same column are connected with each other. Here the cathode of the LED, or negative side, is connected with a jumper cable to the Arduino's ground header, which is like a negative side of a battery. The anode of the LED is connected to a 220 ohm resistor to limit current and protect the LED from being damaged by 5 volts. The resistor is then connected to the digital pin 6 of the Arduino Uno. Then connect the Uno to a PC by plugging in the USB cable into the Arduino and into your PC's USB port. The USB cable will provide power to your Arduino and LED. Now we have to program our Arduino using the freely available Arduino IDE software. You can download the free Arduino IDE software for your OS of choice from the Arduino website. The link is in the description. After installation, you will see this screen, an interactive development environment where you use a slight variation of the C programming language to write and debug code that you want to upload to your Arduino board. The pin 6 will be set as an output in our code, and be set to switch between being on or off, making the LED blink repeatedly. By looking at the code structure, we have two structures present, void setup and void loop. The code in the setup part is only done once when the Arduino is turned on, and is used to assign functions to pins, or other variables. Code in the loop structure is repeated over and over again, for example to make the LED blink infinitely. By using the language statement pin mode brackets 6 comma output in the void setup, we make sure that the pin 6 is set as a digital output. To turn the LED on, we type digital write brackets 6 comma high in the void loop to turn pin 6 on, as high means on in digital. To make the LED blink, we also have to wait. This is done with the statement delay brackets 1000 to make the Arduino wait for 1000 milliseconds or 1 second. We then again turn the LED off by using digital write brackets 6, low as low means off 
and wait for another second using delay. This process repeats again and again, meaning that the LED turns on and off for one second, making it blink. Now we have to set which Arduino board we are using and which USB port the board is connected to. By clicking tools and clicking boards, we can see all the boards available to us. We will select the UNO in this case, as I am using it in this tutorial. Then select the port on which the board shows up when connected with a USB cable to your PC. Mine is COM4, but yours can be different. We are now ready to upload the code to the board by saving our program and clicking the upload button. You can also use the verify button to compile your code and make sure it works, but this is optional. Here we have the final result after the code from the IDE is uploaded to the Arduino Uno and indeed the LED is blinking. You can also modify this code by changing the delay between blinks, for example to make the LED double blink. In this video, we learned about what the Arduino is and how to use it to make an LED blink. Make sure to watch the next video where we learn how to use analog and digital input and output and maybe use some sensors. Now I know this video kind of sounded scripted and that's because it was. The only reason is that I'm not really good at voiceovers yet and I'm trying to improve. But in the meantime if you have any questions or concerns write them in the comments below and I will try to answer them. Also make sure you're subscribed to be notified when the new video is released. Anyway Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.